But if we are serious about cooperation, then we must act with urgency in fixing and reforming the United Nations and other multilateral institutions. And one fix that we from Africa demand is for the United Nations to embrace democracy in the Security Council by giving two permanent seats to Africa with veto power. An institution that excludes 54 African countries with 1.4 billion people while allowing one nation to veto decisions of the remaining 193 member states in the 21st century is simply unacceptable. Uh, yes, greetings and welcome, my dear kings and queens. Those are our African leaders who attended the UN General Assembly and uh, addressed the, the assembly. So today uh, I bring you uh, speeches from President William Samuel Luto of Kenya and President Chakwela. Of course, I will start with President Chakwela, then we'll come up to President Luto. But one thing I notice when uh, our leaders speaking in the UN General Assembly, it looks like uh, many people are outside of the hall. So the seat looks empty, as you see. So uh, I think uh, some of uh, members are ignoring Afghan speeches, but all in all, let us keep pushing our agendas so that one, one day the seat will be full and um, African leaders will be respected. So listen from President of Malawi, President Chakwela, then will go to President uh, Luto of uh, Kenya. Welcome. One place we must have strong governance is here. If governance is weak here, there will be no one to regulate the collaboration and competition between nations in an equitable manner. And it is this absence of equity that is at the root of unwinnable conflict in Eastern Europe, in Palestine, in Eastern DRC, and counting. We need governance reform to make the United Nations stronger because the world needs a strong UN that can be good and peaceful, not a weak UN that can only be harmless. And we need it now. Thank you for your attention. Philemon Young, President of the 79th Session of the United Nations General Assembly, Your Excellency Antonio Guterres, Secretary General of the United Nations, Your Excellencies, Heads of State and Government and Leaders of Delegations, Distinguished Ladies and Gentlemen. Every member state of the United Nations relates to other nations in the world in three dimensions, cooperation, competition, and conflict. And we, how we manage our relationships on these dimensions will ultimately determine the kind of world we will create for the children of tomorrow. So when we sit in this chamber to deliberate on the cooperation or competition or conflict between member states, we are actually designing and deciding our future. I am therefore glad that the theme of our debate this year touches on all three of these dimensions, because the bottom line is that in all three we can and must do better. This year's theme calls on us to act together to advance peace, sustainable development, and dignity. This is a call to stronger multilateral cooperation. But if we are serious about cooperation, then we must act with urgency in fixing and reforming the United Nations and other multilateral institutions and one fix that we from Africa demand 
is for the United Nations to embrace democracy in the Security Council by giving two permanent seats to Africa with veto power. When I first made this call in my inaugural address in this chamber, I was delighted to hear President Biden also announce that the United States is in favor of this reform. Similarly, when I met President Xi Jinping of China three weeks ago, I was delighted to hear that he too is in favor of stronger representation of the interests of developing countries in the Security Council. So Mr. President, the time to fix this is now. We need this fix to strengthen our voice on the issues that matter to us in Africa. In the four years that I have been president, I have declared state of national disaster every year because of climate change impacts that we cannot solve without multilateral cooperation. And for one of those years, I was chair of two developing, uh, development communities, namely the Southern Africa Development Community, SADC, and the least developed countries, LDCs. And I learned firsthand that no nation can survive a global crisis or develop in the face of shocks without strong multilateral cooperation to sustain it. Even this year, I see how challenging it has been for my country and for Malawians. Coming off the back of the state of national disaster that I declared last year to secure international cooperation in response to the devastation caused by Cyclone Friday, I have. Yes, that is President uh, Chakwela. So now let us uh, listen to President William Samuel Ruto. Since the last General Assembly, the global situation has deteriorated across multiple fronts. Conflicts have deepened, economic disparities have widened, and the climate crisis. crisis has intensified. To address these challenges, we must rethink and reform global collaboration mechanisms, making them much more responsive, adaptable, and impactful. The existing international security architecture, represented by the UN Security Council, continues to hamper efforts to maintain international peace and security. The Council is by all intents and purposes dysfunctional, undemocratic, non-inclusive, unaccountable, autocratic, and at, at best, opaque. An institution that excludes 54 African countries with 1.4 billion people, while allowing one nation to veto decisions of the remaining 193 member states in the 21st century is simply unacceptable. We must urgently seek to make the Security Council representative, inclusive, transparent, democratic, effective, and accountable. In Africa, we are not advocating for reform and collective action solely at the UN. In fact, we are also in the process of comprehensively reforming the Africa Union to become a fit-for-purpose institution that can effectively represent African nations globally and deliver prosperity. Excellencies, peace and development are inseparable pillars. One cannot flourish without the other. Yet, the 2024 Sustainable Development Goals report paints a bleak picture. Only 17% of targets are on track. Nearly half show minimal or moderate progress, and over one third have stalled or regressed. The COVID-19 pandemic, escalating conflicts, geopolitical tensions, and climate change have severely impacted progress towards the SDGs and the Paris Agreement goals. Inadequate and unsustainable. Your Excellency, 
President of the 79th Session of the United Nations General Assembly, Ambassador Philemon Young, United Nations Secretary General, Mr. Antonio Guterres, Excellencies, Heads of State and Government, distinguished delegates, ladies and gentlemen. I congratulate you, Ambassador Philemon Young, on your well-deserved election as President of this session of the General Assembly. Mr. President, I welcome the choice of your theme, Unity in Diversity for the Advancement of Peace, Sustainable Development, and Human Dignity for Everyone Everywhere, which resonates with the core principles of the 2030 Agenda and aligns closely with the core values and mission of the United Nations. Excellencies, the world is at a challenging moment and in a most precarious international security dispensation. The promise of the United Nations Charter to save succeeding generations from this couch of war has been profoundly shaken. From land to sea, and from air to the outer space, global peace, security, and stability are increasingly under threat. Conflicts and tensions pervade every frontier, undermining the collective security that international cooperation seeks to uphold. Cases of polarizing narratives, factionalism, social upheavals, organized crime, war, and stockpiling of weapons of mass destruction are at an all-time high. Great power rivalry is intensifying, provoking regional competition and inducing geopolitical and geoeconomic realignments and tensions. The subtle nuances of them versus us has produced negative coalitions, wars, tensions, as well as eroded trust and, and confidence in global multilateral system. From Gaza to Darfur, Ukraine, Yemen, Eastern DRC, the Sudan, the Sahel, and the criminality in Haiti, conflict is inflicting a trail of destruction of life and livelihoods in historic proportions. These conflicts have become battlegrounds for armed factions, external interventions, and proxy wars, resulting in unprecedented anarchic situations and long-lasting negative repercussions on global stability and economic development. The world cannot realize durable peace, security, and shared prosperity when emphasis is being put on what divides rather than what brings us together. We must therefore promote approaches that support positive competition for all. The perilous security landscape is further complicated by emerging threats stemming from human advancement, cyber security threats, and sophisticated cyber attacks on critical infrastructure pose significant risks to national security and global stability. Furthermore, the proliferation of advanced technologies such as artificial intelligence in the military domain and autonomous weapons systems has introduced new challenges for arms control and international regulation. Regrettably, the world's most powerful states have increasingly chosen unilateralism and militarization over dialogue and diplomacy. As a consequence, the capacity of our multilateral institutions to maintain and enforce peace, even in national crises with significant regional impacts, is severely undermined. Even worse, a resurgence of nuclear arms race, buoyed by the intensifying geopolitical rivalries and tensions, has made the possibility of a catastrophic nuclear warfare a real possibility. Our vision of a world free from nuclear weapons and other weapons of mass destruction is dying incrementally. We must not sit back and leave the future 
of upcoming generations to faith. We must intentionally rise to the occasion to meet the challenges of our time by reaffirming the core values of the UN Charter. We need to master the political will and collectively reinforce our diplomatic efforts to confront the security threats through comprehensive, multi-pronged, and context-specific approaches. Excellencies, Kenya's commitment to international peace and security is unwavering. We continue investing in efforts that promote stability and harmony both within our region and beyond. We are committed to continuing to mediate, facilitate, and support peace initiatives and processes in our region, contributing to regional peace operations and the UN peacekeeping missions. Through our participation in the Africa Union trans Transition Mission in Somalia, we have stood side by side with our sisterly neighbor, Somalia, in their fight against Al-Shabaab. We are proud that Somalia will soon take up a seat as a non-permanent member of the Security Council, underscoring the tremendous progress achieved in consolidating peace and stability in that country. The UN must, however, continue to support Somalia in forging an, ag an agreement on the post-2024 security support. Kenya welcomes the adoption of the Security Council Resolution 2719, establishing a framework for financing Africa Union peace support operations through UN-assessed contributions, thereby enhancing our collective peacekeeping efforts. A well-funded AU peace operation are not only an African priority, but a global good, considering the complexity and interconnected nature of emerging threats to international peace and security. Earlier this year, under the request of the leadership of South Sudan, I launched the All-Inclusive Tumaini Initiative, bringing together the warring parties and the political leadership of South Sudan to address the root causes of the protracted conflict in that country. I commend the leadership of South Sudan and all the participating parties for their commitment to the peace process. I also thank all regional and international partners for their unwavering support, both political and financial, to the South Sudan Tumaini Initiative. Ladies and gentlemen, at the last General Assembly, I announced Kenya's readiness to lead a multinational security support mission to Haiti at the Haitian government's request. Following the Security Council's authorization under Resolution 26, 2699, Kenya has deployed 382 specially trained police officers to Haiti. Just a few days ago, I had the opportunity to visit Haiti witness the work of our officers in the field, and observe remarkable progress on the ground. Our support for the Haitian National Police has significantly advanced the pacification of cities and towns, protected critical infrastructure, and relieved many communities previously held captive by criminal gangs. I also commend Haiti's political leadership for forging an agreement and a promising roadmap towards free, fair, and democratic elections. We are deeply grateful for the financial and logistical support from the United States, Canada, and other member states that are shouldering this heavy burden. This has been critical to the MSS's deployment thus far. However, Kenya and other Caribbean and African countries are ready to, to, to deploy, but are hindered by insufficient equipment, logistics, and funding. I appeal to all member states to stand in solidarity with the people of Haiti by providing necessary support, either directly to MSS contributing countries or through the UN Trust Fund. 
I must emphasize, however, that Kenya will deploy the additional contingent towards attaining the target of all the 2,500 police officers by January next year. The progress, is so, is, is, the progress so far in Haiti demonstrates that what was once deemed mission impossible is indeed a present and undeniable possibility. Mr. President, we must candidly acknowledge that international cooperation in its current form has clear limitations. It is constrained by entrenched systems and structures that prevent effective action and meaningful progress. Since yes, kings and queens, welcome back. You heard uh, from President uh, Chakwela of Malawi and also from President uh, Luto of Kenya. Of course, all of them have uh, spoken about the form of UN uh, Security Council, Fairness World, Democracy in the uh, UN. So it looks like even African leaders understand that there's no democracy, or if there's democracy, but it is few uh, democracy in uh, UN because for almost 75 years since the formation of uh, UN Security Council, Africans. Uh, Afghan voice are being muted, so uh, we are not in the UN Security Council. So, as President Ruto said, when others, single member of uh, UN Security Council, can neutralize all votes of more than 100 nations, so I think it is a right time for Africa to say enough is enough. And of course, uh, already the US has promised to support Africa to have a two permanent seat in the UN Security Council but without veto power. But this time African leaders have said without veto power we will not understand that kind of permanent seat. We need the same privilege like uh, those uh, existing five permanent members, US, UK, uh, France, China and Russia. So let us wait and see if uh, these big five will accept uh, Africans or African nations to have two permanent seats with veto power. Uh, you know, kings and queens, there is a big club, so everyone is looking for Africa. So, uh, if Africa were going to have a veto power, I think it will help. And uh, one thing that I am very happy I heard from President Luto is about the reform of the African Union. Despite President Luto has been telling the world but i think this should also be inside of us um, we africans to address this that we need to change but if we address others some of those who have uh, bad in intention they can lob some of our leaders and disrupt agendas we have seen this many times that when africans we plan things so those things being interrupted interfered so uh, when we are going to reform the African Union, I think we need to be serious. Uh, we need to call the, an emergency meeting at the people of Africa, including our brothers and sisters in Caribbean, in diaspora, in US, UK, uh, to see how we are going to reform our African Union. And that's why in my previous uh, presentations, I said that for Africa to have two permanent seats, yes, it is good, but we need single permanent seat as Africa. If we, we become united, united Africa, so if we go out there as a single nation, so we can have veto power and we can all of us be represented there instead of uh, these two permanent seats that have been uh, promised by US without veto power. So we are going to be there but for the interest of others. So we need Africans to come together first, to unite and to see how we are going uh, out there. We will need to go out as Africa, not as individual countries. So kings and queens, uh, we are welcoming those reforms um, announced by President Luto in the, in the African Union. And one thing I'm, I'm very happy that um, the candidate of the African Union uh, chairperson is coming from Kenya. So if uh, Kenya will achieve to uh, produce or provide 
um, African Union Commission chair. So it will be easy maybe to convince, as, um, as President Ruto said, to reform the African Union. Because the current African Union is sponsored by US, Europe, and other Western agents. We need African Union that is sponsored by Africans, so that when we go out there, we are not going there to see our sponsors, to negotiate with our sponsors. We need to go out there to negotiate with our partners, not our sponsors, you see? So, you know, one uh, quote from uh, Thomas Sankara said that, uh, those who feed us controls us. So, if African Union is being fed by uh, US or Europe, it means it's controlled by US or Europe. So we need African Union that is uh, representing Africans. So I think those reform will be good. So those are just my opinions. I would like to hear from you also. What is your opinions? What is your uh, views on this uh, power of speeches from President Chakwela and also from President uh, Luto? So kings and queens, with those few inputs, let, I, let us say thank you. See you next time.